Live from the Ball State News Center, this is News Link Indiana in high definition. Good evening and welcome to News Link Indiana. I'm Tony Sandlaven. And I'm Brittany Army. Thank you for joining us. The Martin Luther King Dream Team Freedom Bus provides kids with a chance to learn about their nation's history. But a recent crime has brought the bus into the limelight for another reason. Newslink Indiana's Cameron de Blasio has the story. Ball State Communication Studies professor Beth Messner planned on opening the Martin Luther King Dream Team Freedom Bus to Ball State students on Friday morning. But she quickly discovered that wouldn't be happening. It, everything was covered in a layer of what I thought was dust. And when I went in to start cleaning the dust, I discovered that a couple of the exhibits had been damaged. Vandals used a hammer to break the glass on a couple of exhibits and set off a fire extinguisher as they left. Messner said the damage occurred within the last two weeks. There's no knowledge of who committed the crime at this time, but Messner says the community outreach in response has been overwhelming. We have experienced amazing, amazing uh, support from the community. Um, we've got emails, phone calls, people volunteering their time, people wanting to know how they can help. Despite the recent damage, Messner says the bus will be back on the road again soon. We're on the road tomorrow. Oh, awesome. We have a um, we have an event at Marion Hunt Public Library with one of their after school programs. And so the bus is a little scarred, but we're taking it out anyway. Messner said the bus should be completely repaired by next week. In Muncie, Cameron de Blasio, Newslink, Indiana. The Martin Luther King Dream Team will be partnering with Texas Roadhouse for a fundraiser tomorrow night from 5 to 7. 10% of all sales will go towards the Dream Team's educational programs. President Obama addressed the country today in a press conference from the White House. Obama spoke after meeting with President-elect Donald Trump late last week. He said that in their discussions, he gave advice to Trump, saying that, quote, campaigning is different from governing. Obama also said that he believes Trump wants to be a successful president and move this country forward. And I don't think any president ever comes in saying to himself, uh, I want to figure out how to make people angry or alienate half the country. Uh, I think he's going to try uh, as best he can to, to make sure that uh, he delivers. Both Obama and Trump said they came away from their meeting feeling optimistic. Well, this election certainly has caused a lot of controversy among some Americans. Hundreds gathered in Indianapolis on Saturday to voice their concerns about Donald Trump. Newslink Indiana's Esther Bauer has more on what took place. and more roared across downtown Indianapolis. While those in attendance ranged in age, what they had in common was their displeasure with President-elect Donald Trump. Rally attendee Kara Schmidt said she came out because she is scared for what the Trump presidency could hold. Well, I think he's just all about himself and the racism and the being against gays because some of my best friends are gay. My, my best friend is actually here. He's holding a Love Trump's Hate sign. So I'm just afraid like he'll do something that'll affect people that I love. Whether those in attendance were afraid of Trump or not, their actions showed differently. Attendees proudly held signs, marched around the area, and heard from other anti-Trump supporters encouraging them to keep fighting. Let's make a war that Donald Trump can hear from here. Come on. While this election is already over, the goal of rallies like this one has a bigger picture in mind. Schmidt says this is only the beginning. But even though he's already won, we don't need to stop fighting for what we believe in because just because, oh, the election's over, there's going to be a new election years down the road and we can just become and progress so much farther. While the rally had peaceful intentions, the police got involved towards the end. The event was set to run until 8 p.m. However, protesters stayed in Indy until well past 10 p.m. In Indianapolis, Esther Bauer, Newslink, Indiana. A total of seven protesters were arrested and two police officers suffered minor injuries. President-elect Donald Trump is starting to put together his administration. An announcement was made yesterday on the promotion of a controversial figure. Sunland Surfighty has more. Donald Trump elevating Steve Bannon to chief strategist and senior counselor in the White House. Already multiple hate watch groups are now rebuking the appointment voicing their concerns about Bannon's ties to the alt-right. 
Bannon was brought on as CEO of the Trump campaign in August. He came in as the head of the right-wing website Breitbart News with a nationalist populist reputation. Known for controversial headlines like Bill Crystal, Republican spoiler, renegade Jew, and birth control makes women unattractive and crazy. What we need to do is bitch slap the Republican Party and get those guys, you know, heaving too. And, and, and if we have to, we'll take it over. Bannon's longtime mission to take down the establishment wing of the Republican Party. If you're fighting to take this country back, it's, you know, it's not going to be sunshine patriots. It's going to be people who want to fight. I mean, Andrew Breitbart was all about the fight. In fact, we call ourselves internally the fight club. And Bannon's target number one has been House Speaker Paul Ryan. Emails obtained by the Hill newspaper show Bannon giving orders to his staff to try to take him down, saying the long game is to have Ryan gone by spring. Bannon, a former Navy officer and Goldman Sachs banker, also surrounded by controversy in his private life. In 2007, his ex-wife accused him of domestic violence and making anti-Semitic remarks, saying in court he doesn't like Jews and that he doesn't like they raise their kids to be whiny brats and that he didn't want the girls going to school with Jews. But Bannon's camp says he never said it. I pledge to every citizen of our land that I will be president for all Americans. Now with this Bannon so in the White House, critics questioning Trump's inclusive vision. Sunlin Sarfati, CNN, Washington. For those who have chosen... Trump also promoted RNC Chair Rince Priebus to be his chief of staff. Despite stirring up controversy with his recent staff selections, Donald Trump did address the recent protests over his election. Trump was on 60 Minutes yesterday and told CBS 60 Minutes correspondent Leslie Stahl he does not condone the violence that has broken out since Election Day. Trump called the violence terrible and said he would tell those people, quote, don't do it because I'm going to bring this country back together. The president-elect also said he is comfortable letting states determine abortion laws and that he plans to fill the vacant Supreme Court seat very quickly. Governor Mike Pence will finish his term. The vice president-elect says his administration won't stop working in the final closing weeks of his time in office. He told reporters that his team, quote, plans to finish strong and serve Hoosiers to the very last hour. Pence has been flying around the country campaigning for Donald Trump since July. Given that the lieutenant governor, Eric Holcomb, won Indiana's gubernatorial race, there was speculation Pence could step down to focus on heading up Trump's transition to the White House. However, Pence said he and his administration will, quote, finish the job before fully moving on to White House duties. Well, Brittany, I think one thing we can agree on is that Mike Pence, when he came back, he brought some pretty good weather with him from the campaign trail. We've seen clear skies, mid 50 degree temperatures. I, I really couldn't ask for better. Absolutely, but I think I'm ready to put on a sweater and have a scarf and put on gloves. So Nathan, what can you tell us for the weather in the next coming week? Yeah, it was a chilly start to the forecast this morning. And my Governor Mike Pence and President, Vice President-elect Mike Pence did bring some nice weather. However, this morning we had a chilly start. 32 degrees was the official low temperature here in Muncie. And that was patterned all across the state of Indiana. 29 degrees in places like Terre Haute this morning. However, we did warm up this afternoon. Currently at the top of the hour, sitting at 48 degrees. Winds still out of the south-southwest at 5 miles per hour allowing those temperatures to remain a little bit on the mild side, allowing you the opportunity if you didn't get a chance last night to see the November supermoon, the largest since 1948. You better get in there before the 2034 return date. Coming up, we're going to talk about this quiet weather that sticks around now, those thunderstorms that are coming in for the weekend forecast, and when those colder temperatures like we saw this morning return. When we return, find out how Ball State Student Government Association is raising awareness to mental health. And we'll have details on how Ball State's marching band is lending a helping hand. Stay tuned.
So I've come up with a family emergency plan. Great. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. How will we know what to do? You won't. I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Thanks for this, sweetie. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. So I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Welcome back to Newslink Indiana. Tonight, students gather in the student center to talk about mental health issues. Samantha Penkel has more on the story. Held an event at the student center here tonight for students who have suffered with mental illness. They wanted an open environment for students who have suffered from this event. And the main goal of the event was for students to be open and to start the conversation about how to handle these issues. This event this means event. a lot to many people suffering with mental illness. Planner of the event, Emily Halling, explains what this event means to her. One of my friends from back home, he actually uh, took his own life and so it really reminded me how important it is to start these conversations. If I, I just wonder if his campus, if they would have started the conversation or if any of his friends would have had the conversation with him, how different the situation would be now. Keynote speaker Katie Johnson will also be coming tonight to talk about mental health issues. I think that oftentimes we're, we're afraid to talk about mental health on college campuses and it's, it's kind of something that we hide behind and so we want to make sure that we're bringing out because if students don't know that we are open to talking about it then they're going to feel like they're alone in their in their struggles and so we want to make sure that they know they have a support system here at Ball State. That's awesome. So um, talk a little bit about um, the safe room. That's an interesting concept. So talk about the concept behind that. So we have a lot of different conversations happening tonight. Our main focuses are on relationships, self-esteem, stress management, as The SGA wanted this to be an event where students felt comfortable coming forward with their mental illness issues such as depression. So when the conversation got too tough, they also had a safe room where students could safely talk with a counselor of their very own. Not only does the SGA feel confident about these mental health issues, but Ball State does as well. There's many counseling opportunities here right at Ball State so students can really feel safe and get the help they need for their mental illness. Live in Muncie, Samantha Pankel, Newslink Indiana. Back to you guys at the desk. Well, Sunday was a sad day for marching bands everywhere after an Evansville family was killed. Newslink's Tristan Schilling has more. Castle High School marching band senior Sophie Reinhardt was killed in a car accident Sunday night along with her two parents, David and Ruth Ann Reinhardt. She, she will really, really be missed. <laughs> this loss comes just one day after the Castle Band's successful performance at the Grand National Competition Finals in Indianapolis. It's just, it's been devastating. Today, the Ball State Marching Band is wearing blue, the Castle School colors, to show support to the family and friends that were impacted by the accident. Really brought everybody together. Three Castle High School alumni have come together to show their support to their family and friends. Well, a couple of the Castle Knights that are alums at Ball State, we all got together and made a banner that said hashtag sing for Sophie on it and we all signed it and we're sending it to the family and hopefully it'll be there for the funeral. In the wake of this accident, the band is Today we are all Castle. 
The date for the funeral has yet to be determined, but the band hopes the banner will get there in time. Lately, we've seen clear skies and cooler weather, but what are we in for some rain showers? Your full weather forecast is next. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Psst, they're coming. Please, is everybody. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Emergency plan today. Of all the things you've done with your bike, donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. Welcome back to NewsLink Indiana. So Tony, this morning when I was picking out my clothes, I wanted to wear a coat. I looked at the weather and it was about 60 degrees and I'm not wearing coats and I'm upset. <laughs> I didn't wear one either today and I really feel like here it is, you know, November. You'd think it'd be about that time. I said earlier, no, I feel like we're past sweater weather. Should be getting right. more to, you know, like pea coat weather. <laughs> I think I just made that up. But you know what, Nathan DeYoung, you can give us the true forecast. What do you got for us? <laughs> Guys, I think the best comparison of the weather that we're going to see over the next week is a roller coaster. We're on our way up in temperatures, and that was the picture over today. Let's look at the last 10 hours over McKinley Avenue. A beautiful day overall, a cold and chilly start to the morning, but turned out to be a decent day overall by the time we topped out this morning. 32 degrees here in Muncie, right at the freezing mark. 31 in Indianapolis, 29 in Terre Haute. Our locations to the south experienced much colder temperatures, but look at the contrast in what we saw. 61 degrees as our daytime high today here in Muncie, 59 in Kokomo, really made a really big difference in our temperatures, making it kind of deceiving almost. Currently out at the top of the hour, we're sitting at 48 degrees, dew point sitting at 32, winds out of the south, southwest, allowing for those mild temperatures to stay in our forecast. Looking at the evening planner overall tonight, 42 degrees by 4 a.m., a few clouds hanging out with us, and that's what precision cast will be indicating over the next couple days here. You notice not much much going on for the daytime tomorrow. Expect partly cloudy skies high topping out just around 60 degrees. Our next system is going to move in on Friday into the weekend. Let's look at the surface map here. This low pressure will drop out of Canada, swing across the Great Lakes region, allowing us to see some rain showers ahead of that cold front. And even a few snow flurries are possible in the daytime on Saturday as the temperatures begin to drop really quickly. Looking at the seven day, not too much going on in these first part of the week by Thursday, 66 degrees. Sunny skies Friday, 68 degrees sunny skies. Changes coming to that forecast on Saturday. A few thunderstorms are possible Friday night into Saturday with a high around 50 degrees. But look at that low temperature, guys. 30 degrees is possible for the overnight low hitting on Saturday. So it'll be definitely a chilly chilly evening <laughs> oh, for sure. Well, thank you so much for that report, Nathan. Meanwhile, Peter, what's going on in sports? Tony, Brittany, Nathan, good evening. Uh, good evening. Ball State men's basketball, big game tomorrow. They're at home. Their home opener against uh, Indiana State will preview that matchup. And Ball State football has put itself 
in a must-win position heading into Wednesday's game. Find out how the team is preparing ahead in sports. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With a unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. You wanted to be a teacher when you were little, but things changed. Teaching didn't seem that cool anymore. So you decided to become something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Amazing things are happening in teaching, so it's time to put it back on your list. And don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. Hey, good evening, everybody. Well, after losing three consecutive games, Ball State football has its back against the wall. Now four and six on the season, the Cardinals have to win their last two games in order to make it to a bowl. Ben Shuren has more on the team's mentality as they head to Toledo. Following a loss last Tuesday to Eastern Michigan, head football coach Mike New said that his team needs to have a one-and-done mentality in order for the Cardinals to win their last two games and to become bowl eligible. I spoke to two different starters for the Cardinals to see how Coach New was installing that mentality on the team. He's told us that, you know, and we all know that we, we got to win out, go to a bowl game. We got to do something extra to, to get to a bowl game. We get, but, I mean, to be completely honest, we practice hard all year. We, that's what we do. We come out here and we practice really hard. So, you know, we really haven't done much different other than, you know, have the awareness that if we, if we don't come home with a W, then we're not going to uh, have an extra game. We really kind of emphasize the finish. You know, we've had a lot of games where uh, we needed to finish. You know, we've come within 10 points or been up in, in the final couple of minutes of games. And, you know, we just emphasize trying to finish. And trying to, it's kind of like a one-shot mentality. It's like a playoff run. You know, you have a single, a single elimination at this point. And, um, you know, we're just harping on that. And this Toledo game is the first round of our playoff. While Ball State's chances for bowl eligibility have changed, both Taylor and Palazzetti have remained adamant that the Cardinals can win out. They're just talking in the locker room about how important this game is. Um, you know, every game's important. You're, you're only offered a limited amount, and there hasn't been, you know, much chatter about doing anything different. That, that's one thing we got to focus on is, you know, you don't really need to do anything different besides make the plays that come to you. I'm telling guys we got three games left. Like, I'm not even putting that down in mind that we have uh, two left. I'm just assuming, you know, we have three games left. You know, I'm taking it as that. The first of Ball State's must-win games is Wednesday when the Cardinals travel to Toledo. Kickoff is at 7. In Muncie, I'm Ben Shuren, Newslink, Indiana. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Kickoff again set uh, for 7 p.m. on Wednesday against the 8-2 Rockets. Meanwhile, Ball State men's basketball returns home tomorrow after a resounding 21-point win to open their season on Friday. The Cardinals trounced St. Louis behind 23 points from Franco House. Tomorrow's home opener comes against a familiar foe in the Indiana State Sycamores. Um, just fine-tuning some things. We had a lot of a lot of mistakes on the, on the defensive end, but um, those really didn't didn't show that that often because of how well we shot the ball. But um, you know, a lot of small things on the defensive end we got to carry over for tomorrow because Indiana State's a really good team, really physical, experienced team, and we just got to be ready for them. 
Right now, I think I'm one and two against them. We won here and lost twice at their place. So I would like to even it back up and get a win here. And obviously, I mean, when, anytime you're playing in state, there's going to be a lot of uh, dudes that you know or are familiar with, familiar faces from Indiana. So you always want to have bragging rights and just come out and compete. Yeah, guys, tomorrow should be an interesting one. Tip off at 7 p.m. inside Worth and Arena. These two teams have met over 100 times in the series and uh, another installment of, of the rivalry. Amazing that we're already at basketball season. Isn't it? It seems like best just yesterday. Of, <laughs> best time of the year, isn't it? <laughs> of you, you, got, you got football still wrapping up, but then basketball, college basketball is, is underway. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Peter. Missing some of your favorite Disney shows and movies? We'll have some sequel reveals on the way. And we'll take a final look at weather when we return. Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Let's go to the shelterpetproject.org and meet a few who are in a shelter near you. Harlow. Whoa, she's one great listener who loves to hear all your stories. My kind of cat. Trulo is a sweet, goofy boy who's eager to please. Sounds just like another dog I know. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self, and I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Welcome back to Newslink Indiana. I'm Jenna Liston with your entertainment news. We can see the future and That's So Raven will be bringing back best friend Chelsea in the new sequel series. In the new show, Raven and Chelsea are both divorced and raising their children. Writing on the pilot is currently happening with production eyed for early 2017. Disney is currently casting the kids. Chelsea's son Levi is described as self-serving, arrogant, and never afraid to do a little manipulation to get his way. The pilot finds Chelsea and her son Levi moving in the, with Raven and her two kids, Nia and Booker. One of Raven's kids has inherited her ability to see the future. Who says fairy tales don't always have a happy ending? Well, your wishes may have come true. Enchanted may be planning a sequel. Amy Adams, who starred in the 2000 movie as Giselle, said at the Governor's Awards that she doesn't know when it will be starring, but will have definitely has, has conversations. About her chanted co-star James Marsden said back in 2017 with E! News, I don't understand why they never did a sequel. It was very a very successful movie. Enchanted also starred Patrick Dempsey, Idina Menzel, and Suzanne Sardin. Disney hopes to start filming Disenchanted Dis next summer. That's all for your entertainment news. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Jenna. Now let's take one final look at weather. Yeah, expect a high of 60 degrees for the daytime tomorrow. Partly cloudy skies with a high of 59 on Wednesday expected. However, colder temperatures are on the way back to the forecast Friday night into Saturday with the next chance of rain. All right, I guess we'll have to take it. Thanks, Nathan. Well, that's all tonight for News in Indiana. Be sure to watch tomorrow night at 9 right here on Carnot Vision. And be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Have a good night.